Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to Cinefix. Uh, for this segment, we are going to try something just a little bit different uh, because we've been talking a lot about it here lately uh, in the edit bay about, uh, you know, because comic book, big budget summer blockbuster season is upon us. Mm -hmm. A lot of good guys, a lot of bad guys. We start talking about some of our favorite villains, right? Yeah. So what we want to talk about today is some villains that aren't just cool villains or good villains, but villains that you really like identify with. Villains that you can honestly see yourself getting behind a little bit, maybe. Maybe you understand where they're coming from. It's sort of a sub-sub-genre, little minu cinema minutia, isn't that what you called it, Casey? I, you know, it's just spitballing. It's fine. It's whatever. Look, <laughs> we're just cinefix, and we're just talking. Yeah. That's all this is. Right. With that in mind, that's what we're doing here. Casey, uh, what do you got for us? What's some of your favorite villains? Let's be careful with the word favorite villains. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> when I was thinking about villains that I could kind of understand yeah. and sort of get behind, um, that doesn't mean I necessarily liked the character. Because the first thing I thought of was Tomorrowland, you know, Hugh Laurie's uh, character sure. in Tomorrowland. Because <laughs> um, I remember seeing that movie and thinking like, Nah, he gave us a chance. Yeah. We screwed it up. Let's let all those stupid people on Earth die. You yeah. Know, just, yeah. They, they weren't innovative enough. They yeah. were parasites, Casey, frankly. It, it's bad enough that you're making us think about Tomorrowland. I know, I'm sorry. But I mean, but seriously. <laughs> but also what you're chance. doing is I started to say Tomorrowland, but I don't want to talk about Tomorrowland. Right, but and as now a result we're of that, we're talking about, about Tomorrowland. Tomorrowland. So you're what, right. what was your real pick? That was my first mistake. Yeah. Um, no, <laughs> my real pick though has gotta be Roy Batty. <laughs> from Blade Runner. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, this guy, I, I totally understand where he's coming from. You know, it, first of all, he gets thrown into life. He's got like basically superpowers. He's a better human than we could possibly be. He's more human than human. He's really. more human than human. But he's only got a four year lifespan. That's bullshit. Drag, yeah. You know, they throw him out into outer space. He's got to fight at the Tannhauser Gate. He's got a, he's fighting for us. And then we throw him on a slave planet, make him mine and shit. And then he, what, he, he becomes the revolutionary guy. He saves all his people, brings them down to like find their creator and like get their life back, get, get some semblance of life, which is just what we all want anyway. There's a version of Blade Runner that is that he's going, Roy Batty is going on like the hero's journey. Right. Like there's a version of that movie that's just, just a little tweaked and all of a sudden he's the good guy. And yeah, maybe he's a little hot headed. Maybe he's, you know, a little rash sure <laughs> but um i would be too in that scenario you're right his poetry like tears and rain on point yeah no and i'm glad you brought that up because blade runner is one of those movies that you you just should watch once a year yeah at absolutely least. just keep going back to it because there's so yeah. much there there's so much and i'm to overdue find. to watch that movie again but mm -hmm. anna what do you got okay uh for me it's uh it's dalton russell from the inside man uh that's okay. clive owen's character the thing is, you know, he, he's technically the villain because he's the guy that's robbing the bank. He's the, the head of the crew that's robbing it. Technically, there is somebody worse because, you know, Nazis. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> Spoiler alert, it's Nazis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but the fact is that, that he's, he's doing a wrong thing for a pseudo-right reason. And I say pseudo-right because right. he's still getting paid for it. Sure. You know, he's, he's essentially, you know, a mercenary bank robber. But the fact is that, like, that what he's doing, he's going up against Nazis. He's helping to expose people that have done incredibly bad things. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, how can you not get behind well, that? Well, and that's a, it's one of those movies that at the end when he gets to sort of walk away from it, it's like, we're all okay with that. Yeah, totally. Because you, know? like, you don't want, you know, you don't want Denzel Washington to lose per se, yeah. but at the same time, you, you don't necessarily want him to, to beat Clive Owen. Yeah, so. that's, that's a movie that, that really came and went yeah. for no reason at all. Yeah, that's a, so it was good. a good movie. It's a really, really good, good yeah. movie. Clive Owen in Inside Man is a good bad guy. Does the presence of Nazis automatically exclude him from being the bad guy? Yeah, I mean the thing is, it that, might. Yeah, but they're but the Nazis are sort of side bad guys. They're right. they're sort of like the the undercover thing that you find out sort of like later. The goal of the other bad guys. Yeah, that I mean, working for. Yeah, yeah, I mean you you think that that it's a, a a detective going up against the guy robbing a bank. Right. That's what you think the movie's about. Yeah. yeah. But then they introduce the villains adjacent. Right. Yeah, he's he's antagonist adjacent. Yeah. <laughs> For mine, I I'm just such an action movie junkie that I, the the one bad guy that always sticks out in my mind is Ed Harris from The Rock. Oh yeah. Because he's doing like a really noble thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, to try to get sort of some justice for these men that have died under his command over the years, uh, but he's going about it by taking hostages and holding a city for ransom. You know, with with VX gas warheads that, <laughs> man, they do some nasty stuff. Yeah. But it's it's one of those things that it, 
it, it's it's he's he's a he's a good bad guy and that he's smart and he's he's capable and he's doing he's his plan is going off without a hitch. The intentions behind it are so good mm -hmm. that it's like you can't really argue with what he's what he's trying to accomplish. The way he's going about it is what makes him a bad guy. Yeah. yeah, so much so that they even have like that turn where you realize like he doesn't really have the stomach of like killing an entire yeah. city full of people and then they're like, yeah, but the dudes who work for him are yeah. even worse right, than him. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, and you're right, like it's it, he's a really kind of great character that that you you definitely it's he's such in such a gray area. You're yeah. like, you know, it's like where what is a what is a moral guy do in a not really moral world and it brings a much more interesting layer of depth to the story itself yeah you know because it's like it, it raises if he was just a regular bad guy it's like you know yeah i'm taking city hostages for money and then it's like okay you're gonna die and that's it that's all i know but you, you like there's some there's some you know you don't, you don't really know how it's gonna play out for him you yeah. know throughout the whole movie so well you're like you're taking a good cause and just pushing it to the extreme like yeah. when when someone becomes so desperate and and they have this core belief that is so strong you know, anything's possible. Yeah. You know, we, no normal person would be like, oh, it's okay to go out and murder somebody, but if they, like, murdered your daughter, right. and then you just, you are pushed to that extreme, and it becomes a revenge tale, like, you get behind that motivation. Yeah. So it's it's all about what what are we capable of when push comes to shove. I mean, The Rock is a movie all about how, like, people that are working for the government get screwed over by the government. Yeah. I mean, like, even, like, uh, you know, even uh, James Bond there, you know? It's like he's been rotten in jail for, Shaker, like, 40 yeah. years. Yeah. You know, he's never getting out. He had to find his own way out. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of fun narrative for... Um, Michael Bay, who tends to do stuff that is very on the like conservative, like military yeah, right yeah. side. Yeah, yeah. A lot of a lot of slow motion American flags. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But the other one that I wanted to bring up, Principal Rooney from <laughs> Ferris yeah. Bueller's Day Off. Right, totally. That poor guy. Yeah. Like he's literally just doing his job, and I guarantee you, this isn't the first time Ferris has done something like this. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, He's going above and beyond his job. He really is. I yeah. want my kids to go to a school with principal that's that dedicated. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I honestly do. Like Ferris Bueller in that movie, I know he's the hero of the movie and right. he's really iconic and everything. Dude's an asshole. Oh, totally. Of course. He's, he's a real asshole in that yeah. movie. Just to be clear, we're talking about the character Ed Rooney, not the actor no. who later yeah, became, not, who, not who, who was later yeah, revealed he's into yeah. kiddie porn or whatever. Like, yeah. it's just. Yeah. When we I say I want my kids to go to a school where that guy's the principal, I'm right. talking about the character <laughs> of, of Fred Rooney. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we don't we don't want to think there Super was an ulterior motive that. as to why he was uh, going exactly. after Ferris. Yeah, exactly. why end up on that little kid's school bus at the end? Well, right. Dave, um, I know that you're going to bring up this conversation. Okay. All right. So. Uh, okay. Let's talk about uh, a good movie. Uh, right. Let's talk about a great movie, okay? <laughs> All right, so th this is a movie I would never bring up if it wasn't for this case, okay? <laughs> and, and I have to bring up 1996's Biodome. <laughs> okay, poor Dr. Faulkner in Biodome, okay? The great William Atherton plays this guy. He is like an environmentalist. He's a super scientist. They build a Biodome for like $10 million, and all he wanted to do was save the world, to, to keep homeostasis. What's wrong with that? And then these two freaking idiots, right? Pauly Shore and Stephen Baldwin, they're just these bumble walking around the desert. They're like, oh, look, it's a mall. They thought it was a mall because they had to pee. They end up locked up in the biodome, right? And then poor Dr. Ath... Poor, uh, Dr. Dude, we can call him Dr. Atherton. It's more or less what he is. Poor Faulkner over here, okay? He's like, the, the guy who owns the biodome wants them out. And he's like, no, we need to keep this hermetically sealed for one year. I'm a responsible science guy. I want to save the world. Okay. And then they go about dismantling the entire operation. His people turn on him. So at the end, when he's a raving maniac trying to bomb the biodome, Dave. a of course he is. I'm gonna stop you there. Of we, we've he already is. talked about this Biodome. Poor man. When we took over this, this channel, man. I swore to myself we would never talk about Biodome. <laughs> did you? Did you make? I that, did. Like you just wrote it it's in, in blood. Yeah, wrote okay. it in blood. Yeah. All right. So, but I will say that William Atherton is a spectacular bad guy. He is. He, and he is. and even like look at him in Ghostbusters. Like yeah. he's a guy who's just trying to do his job. He's yeah. being yes. a dick about it. Yes. He's being oh, a pencil no, no. neck about but it. But he has no. Dick. He has no dick. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Real Real Genius is a super underrated movie. He's a great bad guy. In that so too. Good. And that's yeah. another one where he's just he's a guy, he's a he's a prick, mm -hmm. but he's he's just going about a job. He's trying to get this job done for the uh, for the government. Yeah. Create a laser. Right. Uh, <laughs> Make some <laughs> create, popcorn. Create a space laser that can kill lots of people. That's yeah. all he's doing. Yeah. Right? He's just Studio. trying to do his job. Yeah. So William Atherton is a good example for the most part 
of what we're not talking about today. <laughs> Dave, what, the unfortunate thing is I think we're out of time, so you can't talk about your actual No, can I have my, can I have my other one? Let we got to do one. it real really quick. Really quick, okay. Actually, the other one that I actually really agree with is Koba from Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. I know it's all messed up and he wants to kill humans and stuff, but frankly, it's a prequel. We all know that the, the simians are going to take over anyway, but like Koba totally has like a good case. I mean, he, he knows that humans are bad. He was mistreated when he was, uh, you know, a lab ape or whatever you right. want to say. Uh, you know, in that moment when he was like, like looking at his scars, he's like, this human work, this human work. I'm like, yo, Koba's the best. I want Koba <laughs> to Koba, win this I whole get thing. It. Yeah, I get yeah. it, man. Koba Koba humanity. Kill the yeah. 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 Caesar, this whole thing with humanity, it's not gonna work out. We're terrible. And then meanwhile, uh, <laughs> Toby Toby Kebble went on to be one of the least motivated, stupidest bad guys yeah. in Fantastic Four. Oh, I know. So there you I go. Know. Poor guy. All right, guys, so those are some of our, uh, our picks for, for the best villains that you can actually get behind in movies. Let us know what you think. What are some of your favorite villains that you, that you actually understand, that you can sort of see yourself maybe siding with? Uh, let us know about that in the comments down below. Click like and subscribe if you want to see more uh, more of our conversations like this, because honestly, this is what it's like in our edit bay. Like nine, nine times out of ten, we're talking about bull like this. Uh, so let us know what you think about it down in the comments. Stick around Cinefix for more uh, movie stuff, and we'll see you next time.